the heightened problems that women were facing in the uh, post-communist period uh, did lead to a need to understand and, and I think throughout the bloc, former bloc, um, um, gender studies and feminism uh, developed um, um, kind of a, a local a vernacular uh, and drawing upon various uh, 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 traditions from around the world, but actually also developing on its own and, and flourishing of gender studies um, uh, as you described it in Romania. So, so yeah. that, that's really, I think something, that's the baseline. And, and I think the good news is actually that that developed and it developed power. The bad news is that there's a reaction to it. And I, th I think right. that's, the, that's the next uh, uh, part of the story. So, so I, I, yeah. I, I, that I'd like to hear you talk about this whole idea of gender ideology as right. being sort of the new communist, you know, the new uh, uh, communist enemy or something of that sort. Right. And of course, so much has been written about that in Poland as well. My friend Agnieszka Graf has, has, has right. done quite a bit and there's many others who've written about it as well. And so she's in part my inspiration for how I think mm -hmm. about it to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, so this interesting, um, very early on, in fact, reaction to uh, the development of a feminist discourse and the language that you're talking vocabulary, right? Um, you see, uh, even you know, in the article that he shared with me, and I remember very well from the you know the second half of the '90s, uh, this trope, the stereotype of the man-hating feminist who is here to emasculate men and defeminize women, um, and looks a lot like a Stalinist apparatchik. Mm -hmm. So, so there was the trope of overlaying, you know, something that was clearly, as it was developing then, you know, inspired by Western feminism, right? And to overlay that with not yet the language of political correctness mm -hmm. or cancel culture, but, but where, you know, the ugly woman who is also like your babushka and your crazy Kagebe, uh, you know, informer or apparatchik was already to some extent present. Right. right. Um, but it was the issue was back then that, in fact, the presence of any kind of feminist positioning was not all that prominent in, right. in public discourse. So so it was on the margins and it was kind of like a ha ha, cute, funny, you know, just good old misogyny. Um, and then as Romania, so and I'm going to talk about Romania very directly here. Sure. As Romania started to contemplate what it would take for it to become part of the EU, because that's really important, I think, in terms of thinking about transitioning to this new phase. Um, it realized that gender mainstreaming, because we're talking about the early 2000s at this point, right? Gender mm -hmm. mainstreaming was, at that point, a core component of how Romanian lawmakers, institution builders needed to think about um, Legislation, policies, programs, training of public, uh, you know, uh, office holders of the law enforcement, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so uh, we end up with a mishmash in the early 2000s of people hurrying to write into law, to write into regulations, all sorts of wording about gender parity or gender representation. Um, in most of these cases, the people doing the work, the people um, being appointed to be on the chair of you know, whatever committee was being appointed to deal with this in parliament, Senate, and the government, yeah, yeah, were people who had never studied gender studies, who like were not feminist, 100% not feminist, and who were about 90% not women also. Mm -hmm. That's the situation in like 2003, 2004, right? Yes. So my friend Mihaela Miroyu, who is the most prominent feminist in Romania and who basically created the first feminist studies program. And it's just, you know, she, she worked really hard to try to put together ways to train people to do gender mainstreaming. Right. She was never appointed to any of these positions ever. 
Right. And when several of her students who are extremely competent tried to compete for these in an open competition and with incredible CVs compared to other people. I mean, I, I looked at the CVs because they're public you know, thing, knowledge of the National Council of, to Fight Discrimination. Not a single person in that group has any serious qualification in feminist theory or gender studies. They have almost nothing to do with gender justice. So what really started to happen is the kind of the pretense of doing gender mainstreaming, but without it, right? And so what you have is a reaction by feminists at that point saying, this is bullshit, pardon my French. This is not what we're trying to do here or, you know, so this in this process of increasing tension between pretending to do gender mainstreaming and being critiqued from inside, you have a revival of feminists are men haters. But now there's an added layer because by the period that we're talking about now, it's 2007, 2008, there's a global recession, unemployment's going up, uh, there's the migrant crisis that's starting to develop, right? Which grows and grows. So by 2012, now you have the Syrian refugee crisis as well, right? So Romania basically at this point has been doing some gender mainstreaming, but without really empowering women or engaging in really producing gender justice. 